I mean, will scientists or, or new scientists be taught to rely on their entire self rather than just, I think that that, that can easily be done in today's curriculum. It depends a lot though on who's teaching and how they're teaching it. Uh, I think probably the best teachers and the best students have always learned that you learn your craft as well as you possibly can. And you learn how to get through your craft somehow. You, you take inspiration from wherever it may come. Uh, I'm not sure that's really new. It, uh, what I would like to see, though, incorporated in, into scientific curriculum is history of science in general to get rid of the illusion that we're modern, modern and sophisticated and things that we're doing now were never thought of before because a lot of times it was thought of before. That's part of it. The other one is philosophy of science to get a context on how what you're doing and how it fits in with construction of knowledge in the first place. And probably most important is the sociology of science. So those three, his, history, philosophy, sociology, are almost never taught in a curriculum having to do with science or engineering for that matter. And I think it's absolutely critical because it puts into context what you're doing. And if you don't know that context, then you will see certain things and say, oh, well, that's anomalous and doesn't make any sense. It's not true. And that is sometimes true, but oftentimes is not true. It just means that there's a, a challenge against assumptions. And I, I think back on my training in engineering and, and science, I don't ever remember anybody saying, these are the assumptions upon which we will then build up what you're going to know. And, and without that knowledge, the student will simply accept what they're being taught as this is the way it is, as opposed to this is actually built on assumptions. And the assumptions in many cases cannot, they're, they're by fiat. We don't know that they're actually true, but they're by fiat true. So I had to learn that the hard way. And I think it would benefit all scientists to actually know in much greater detail how their particular piece of science fits in with the rest, and also the, the sociopolitics of science. That probably wasn't as important 50 years ago, but it's becoming more and more important now to see how it fits in not only with the rest of science, but with society and business, because there are lots of competing interests now that drive science